Hey guys, it's Denali. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to bring you another car chat where I talked about three things that I think you and I should stop doing and focusing on in our businesses. Let's get into it. I've got notes here, so if I look down, that's what I'm reading. Okay, so the first one is to stop obsessing over inventory that you don't have or don't have access to and focus on the inventory that you do have access to. So if you've been watching my channel for some time now, you know that when I first started out, I oftentimes, because I was watching haul videos, I oftentimes was focusing on brands that I don't have access to in my area. So I was going to thrift stores and I'm going through the racks and I'm like, show me the Lily Pulitzer, show me the Vineyard Vines. And what I come to find out later is that those brands just aren't as popular in my area. However, instead of really looking into that and examining why I wasn't finding those brands in my area, I just kept looking for them. And in the meantime, passed up a lot of really great brands, some that maybe weren't even necessarily local to my area. It's not a local designer, but for instance, Johnny was. That story will haunt me forever. I used to pass that up all the time because I thought it was a stupid brand name. Wow, joke's on me, right? I should have been focusing on are who are brands that are local to my area? What sport activities are popular in my area? What designers are local to my area? What uh, large corporations are in my state? I really should have focused on that and looked at how I could be incorporating those brands into my store and probably making more money because I find them more often. So for me, it's a lot of outdoorsy brands. I live in Washington State. We've got REI here. We've got Eddie Bauer, a million different ones. I can find Columbia jackets. You know, I turn around and like there's a million Columbia jackets at the thrift store. So I really should have focused on what was available to me and not paid attention to what other people said they were getting. That's a nice compliment but it really shouldn't have been my focus. And so if that's your focus, I urge you to look beyond that. Look who's in your area. Maybe nobody's in your area, but think about other factors, right? Maybe if you live out in the middle of farmland, maybe you have access to clothing or equipment that people would use in a farmland area, right? There's probably a big market for that because a lot of times that stuff is really expensive. Uh, workwear is expensive to purchase. Okay, so the next thing, which is probably, I don't know, a little bit controversial, is to stop blaming the platforms for why you're not making sales when it's clearly working for others. Examine and be willing to examine uh, what it is that you might be doing wrong. There's exceptions to every rule. I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, sometimes it's the platforms and they change and it's the algorithms and then they undo the changes to the algorithms. Yes, I totally understand that stuff happens and that might be why you're temporarily not making sales. However, oftentimes I'll hear people say, you know, I can't sell on this platform. It, this platform just doesn't work for me. Da, 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 da. A million different reasons. Well, I don't think so. I don't think that eBay... Boshmark, Etsy, that their board of directors is sitting around and saying, uh, guys, yeah, I don't think that we're going to let John sell on this platform. Don't let him make any sales, uh, but don't tell him, just let him try it out for a really long time, get frustrated with it and finally make a public statement that he just can't sell items here, right? They're not personally targeting you in that way. Be willing to examine what it is that you might be doing wrong, right? And I've had to do that as well. I used to make bold statements in the past saying, I can't sell anything on Depop. I don't get it. Truth of the matter was, is that I just wasn't listing enough stuff over there and maybe wasn't listing stuff that they're interested in either. Just because I think it's cool doesn't mean that they'll think it's cool. So for me, I honestly, what the issue was for me, I just wasn't listing there enough. And we know all of these platforms like regular activity. I remember when I signed up for Depop, they said to, you know, don't list everything at once, like list a little bit each day. But did I listen to that? No. So <laughs> you have to be willing to go back and say, hey, what am I doing wrong in this situation? Maybe, just maybe, it's me. And it was. And so if you're feeling like, for instance, eBay just doesn't work for you, be willing to examine what it is that you're doing wrong. Are you not consistent over there? Do you list everything in two days and then do nothing else for the rest of the month? Well, then you might be seeing why that platform doesn't work for you because technically 
you're not doing the work for the platform, right? Maybe, I don't know, just a thought guys, right? <laughs> okay, the last one is to, and I've kind of talked about this in videos in the past, but to stop basing your success off the metrics of others around you. Uh, this is one that I have to remind myself all the, of all the time, right? You know, I, I can't look at other people and say, oh, I finally did what somebody else is doing. Now I'm successful, right? I think a lot of times we do that. Like that's some measure of success. No, it's not. That's what they're doing. That's not successful though, right? We don't know the ins and outs of their lives or their business. So why are we deeming that to be a success? They might feel like they're a mess. <laughs> so, you know, unless you're comparing yourself to somebody like, I don't know, Bill Gates or whatever, like, okay, maybe, right? Like maybe you've reached some level of success, but I don't think that we should. It's really about setting your own goals and what you decide, what you decide to be actually a version of success, okay? And when you hit those goals, then that is when you've hit your success, right? But don't base it off of, oh, well, this person sells $3,000 in a week or 2,000 or 500, whatever that number is, and then I'm successful. Everybody's circumstances are different. For, for one person, $250 in sales a week might be a huge success, and it is. Given the time that you have in your life with the amount of inventory you're able to get and that you have access to, that is a success, okay? So remember that. Your success is not based off of the metrics of other people. I hope you remember that. I have to remind myself that all the time, okay? So anyways, that's my video for you guys. I hope it was helpful. Just to recap again, the three points that I made were to stop obsessing over inventory that you don't have access to, focus on the brands that you do have access to. Oh my gosh, I could have just started a, a store dedicated to REI and Eddie Bauer only and I would have been a rich woman, but eh, say la vie. <laughs> the second one would be stop blaming the platforms for why you're not making sales, right? They're not sitting around saying, hey, let's come up with a way um, to make Jennifer feel like a failure on this platform day in and day out and never give her sales. Be willing to, you know, look at yourself and what you're doing wrong. Yeah, it's a tough one. Lastly, stop basing your success off the metrics of others those numbers are arbitrary. They don't matter. They have nothing to do with you. And so because they have nothing to do with you, you shouldn't compare yourself to them. So I hope you remember that. But yeah, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.